Thanks. Um, I don't think I really deserve that, though. Not, not yet. <laughs> no, no, not, not by the end of it either, trust me. Um, I hope everyone's got some drinks, get a little buzz going, because you're really not going to enjoy yourself otherwise. Um, you know, yeah, like George said, this is a long time in the making, and I wasn't even going to come and do this tonight. I was just, I think I've been crushed by life at this point, because this isn't all I do. I don't just make an ass out of myself in front of strangers. Um, I try to write uh, comic books, and I've been doing that for about a year now, and uh, I, you know, that's my dream, that's what I'm going to do. And I understand that life's not fair, but it seems purposely unfair to me. Like, life goes out of its way to be unfair to me. I had this uh, image in my head of waking up with, I don't know why, the planet Saturn sitting over me, and just going, on behalf of the universe, Chris, fuck you, and then just taking a shit in my mouth. That's how I feel my life is gone at this point. Um, so yeah, I don't think it'll come out. And normally I'm like super nervous, but tonight, still a little nervous, but just more miserable, I don't care. You, you can boo me all you want, and I'm not, it's not gonna hurt me, because my dreams have been crushed, so. Uh, which is sad, because I'm only 25. So for, I, for me to feel my life is over, and this is how I knew my life was over, because last night I, I looked at my girlfriend and I said, I think I'm gonna enroll in college and get a real job. And that is something I've never, ever wanted to do. Just be a miserable person. Like, um, she wants me to be a guidance counselor for kids, and I can't do it because I fucking hate kids. <laughs> and the reason I hate them is because they're so full of hopes and dreams, and they're happy, and their life's still going to work out, and I think everything's going to be perfect. And I wish I was like that still. And I was, up until last night. And I fucking hate that. And I can't even take solace in the fact that eventually life is going to crush their dreams, too, because they get to be happy for longer than I am right now. So I feel I'm just going to end up in a dark room crying to myself. And the worst part is I don't drink, so it's not even that I'm drunk in a dark room, alone, naked, crying. I'm just alone, naked, crying. My cats won't even come near me. It's the worst feeling in the world. I couldn't even, um, like I can't get my girlfriend to come out and see me. Like, she's not here tonight, never is, doesn't come out, doesn't give a shit, knows that I'm a failure and a waste of life. I only think we like each other. I think the whole reason she's with me is because it's a place to live. And I like to occasionally have sex, so it's a nice trade-off. No one else will live here, and you know you don't have sex with anyone else, and we'll just be happy together. Um, but I mean, I've been with her for eight years, which is a long time. You know, we're high school sweethearts, actually. Hold for the applause. That's impressive. Eight years, right? Come on. Yeah. High school. Come on, that's a long fucking time. Yeah, she's gonna be a sophomore next year. I'm real proud of her. <laughs> But she's a great woman. After eight years, you're going to fight. In eight years, you're definitely going to fight all the time. And money is one of the biggest things we fight about. Um, she thinks I'm cheap, and I'm not. I think I'm frugal, I like to say. I don't know who the fuck says that, but... Um, I try to tell her, I go, babe, I'm not cheap. I love you, and I want to marry you one day. And I need to save as much money as possible so I can pay for your alimony checks. Um, and then children. God, children, should we or shouldn't we have the abortion all the time? No, that's, that's a joke. I'm, I'm pro-choice and we live on the second floor. Watch out for the steps, babe. I don't have a girlfriend. Not after that joke. She always suspected I pushed her. No, I, I do have three cats, um, which is sad to say out loud. Yeah, I'm a 25-year-old guy with three freaking cats. Uh, but I love cats. I mean, how many people have cats? Uh, anyone here? Yeah, cats are amazing creatures. There are just hundreds and thousands of them in the streets just playing with garbage like babies. You can walk outside, pick one up. It needs someone to love it. You can take it home. And they're great because they are the only creature on the planet that no matter what you put in their face, they don't, they don't get scared. It could be your hand, a knife. They just think you're trying to show them some kind of affection and they rub against it. Imagine if people were like that. Like if you had to go... Like you, sir, you look like someone who might have to rob someone one day at gunpoint. So imagine you go out and you just hold this guy up and you go, give me all your money. And he just goes... Hey, feels really good, man. Well, you, know, you can't shoot someone like that because they're just so cute and cuddly. You know, take them home and give a can of tuna. But now I, I do love cats. Um, God, I'm such a sad person. Um, oh, God, you know what I was thinking about? This is the way my mind works. Because I just sit there and I was thinking about um, old sayings the other day. Like, uh, don't let the, uh, you know, the cat out of the bag, things like that. And, and those bug me. And the one that really gets my damn nerves is, you don't want to open that can of worms. Anyone ever said that? Because who the hell cares if you open a can of worms? 
What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Oh, they spill out. You got to put them all back in. They're not fucking cheaters. They move at the speed of slug. Just toss them back in your gut. That saying needs to be changed to, you don't want to open that box of badgers. Because badgers are vicious creatures. If you put them in a box, and you open, they're going to take it. So can everyone get on board with saying that from now on? You know, like you go home, just try to use that in a normal conversation. Uh, so, but yeah, like I said, just a miserable person. Like, um, all right, I, growing up here in Atlantic City and around there, uh, it's really weird. It's a weird place to grow up because, I mean, one, drugs are just everywhere, which I don't do drugs. I never have. Um, and there's a reason for that. When I was a child, uh, my mother told me, never do drugs. Just, just never do it. And I, you know, I asked her why, and she goes, well, Chris, you're fucked up enough in the head to begin with. Drugs would just push you over the edge. So those, yeah, were wise words uh, from my mother, who was an amazing woman. And I used the past tense was, not because she's dead, but because she had a sex change. No, that's a joke. She died. Died horribly in fire. Very sad. Not even a joke. Now, um, she would appreciate that joke, I think, um, if she was sober enough to hear it. Um, yeah, I, I did love my mother. Um, but yeah, growing up here, and then the sex trade. And this is the, I don't have a life anymore. And the life I used to live, and when I talk about the sex in Atlantic City, was, and this is a true story. This is how just bizarre my life was a couple years ago. Um, I was moving into my first apartment with a buddy of mine and my girlfriend. And I had this friend, and I only call him a friend because we were more than acquaintances, we were more than co-workers. And I didn't really like him, but I felt bad for him. He was a few years older than me, his name was John. And um, just a miserable person, just no real friends. I think he had been kissed once and he paid a girl five dollars to do it. So he comes over to help us with this apartment. Um, within ten minutes he's drunk in the closet crying and hates his life. And we're talking about it and he says, you know, I, I've never been with a woman. Because my mom once took me to an Asian massage parlor. Which if you don't know, they're wonderful places where these Asian women will massage your balls. It's great. Um, you pay about $200, they take you in, they give you a shower, they give you a massage, they fuck you, they put you in a sauna, they give you a Sprite. It's awesome. So I've been told. Um, yeah. So he tells me his mom took him there, and big surprise, they won't let him and his mother in the building. Can't imagine why not. So I don't believe him. Now we had to have his mom come pick him up, because he's so drunk. And uh, I, I'm drunk, so I ask his mom, I go, hey, we took uh, John to an Asian massage parlor? She goes, well, you know, his father won't do it, and, you know, he just needs to be with a woman. And Chris, would you do it? Would you take him? I'm drunk. I'm, Hell yeah, I'll go. Look, yeah. Next day, I sober up, I get a call from him, he goes, so my mom says you're going to take me to the Asian massage parlor? I'm like, oh, well, yeah, okay, well, it's 200 bucks, we'll go. I don't have 200 bucks, so... There's this place where you can get a uh, hand job for forty dollars. <laughs> no, come on. So I take him uh, there. He goes in. He's real excited. I'm in the porn shop. I love porn shops. I'm at home there. Uh, porn shops, comic book shops, pizzerias. Three places that I could live in. If, if somebody combined all three, I would never leave. Um, so he goes in. He comes out. He's real excited. Um, he's like, oh, it was the greatest thing ever. I'm like, yeah, man, you should go buy me pizza. That'd be great. So we go to my friend's house so we can go there and get pizza. While we're there, uh, his mother calls him to see how everything went. That's weird, right? Come on. So he's talking to his mom, and he comes back in and he goes, Chris, my mom wants to talk to you. So I take the phone and go, yeah, hello. He goes, oh, I want to thank you so much for taking John. I appreciate it so much. I am disappointed, however, that he didn't get to come. And... That's weird, right? I mean, what, 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 he, what he told her, he told her. He goes, oh, it was great, Mom, I just didn't get to ejaculate. Hey, I, I could not imagine having that conversation with your mother. Like, oh yeah, Mom, the whore was great. I mean, I didn't get to come. Um, so that was the life I used to live. And I mean, it was, it was fun, but it was weird. It was, um, you know, going out down the streets, doing fake accents and getting people to buy us booze. Um, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm So that that was like my life. We'd go to strip clubs and we would give girls dollars that said God forgives you, which is just horrible, and I know I'm a horrible person. <laughs> but um, that was the way I used to live until my girlfriend found out about it. So that all ended. And now I don't do anything. And that's part of the reason I ended up forcing myself to come out tonight, because I've just been sitting on the couch watching TV. 
And not even like good television, like Desperate Housewives. Like three days I finished that entire series. You know how sad that is? And I was starting to just reek. Like just, I had this smell. It smelled like I had run a marathon. And I hadn't done anything, but I just like this smell of accomplishment. And people saw me and they thought I did something. Oh, did you just build a house? Like, well, like, um, well, I'll go watch Law and Order SVU. Uh, so I had to get, I had to force myself to, to roll out of bed at the crack of 6 o'clock tonight. Um, I just come down here. It's just, like I said, it's an awful, sad life. So this will probably be the last time I ever do this for anyone because I just can't take any more disappointment. Um, like, I know everyone here is just disappointed looking at me. Like, you can feel, I really just smell the failure coming off of me. Nothing will ever work out in my life. Um, like, I know my girlfriend, she's going to finish college and leave me. She told me. I mean, that's how I know. It's not like I'm paranoid. Like, we were talking about this. You know, you, you got a career you're working towards, you're going to finish college. And she goes, yeah, then I'll probably leave you. She goes, I'll leave you one of the cats, though, to keep you company. So yeah, it's the cat's gonna run out the fucking door when you realize the fucking guy here I am. <sighs> but, you know, and then, I, I, I don't drink either, so I'm just nothing. And I, I do wish I drank or did drugs, because at least then I'd have an excuse for being such a loser. Um, and it's not like I don't have opportunities to do drugs. I've always had friends pushing drugs on me. And one guy tried to tell me, I needed to try um, shrooms, you know, hallucinogenic mushrooms. Right here, right he's right there, yeah. He's, he's always here. <laughs> so, and, and the salesman that he is, he tried to tell me what, like, the benefits of shrooms. I asked him, so what's, what's the benefit of this? And he goes, man, you will see colors. I go, I can open a box of Crayolas and see fucking colors now. No, these are colors that don't even exist. And I said, fuck it, I don't want the responsibility of naming a new color. You keep your dirty magic mushrooms. That's, um, oh god. Now I'm trying to think, maybe I do want that. I just want to see colors chasing after me and everything perfect. This might be a lot easier just looking out at you if you were just blotches of purple, and yellow, and green. Um, normally I'd be like, oh god, like pissing myself. I haven't vomited yet uh, performing, but. I don't know, let's see how this night goes. Um, anyway, you know, I, so I just spend a lot of time by myself. I don't really have friends. That's because I'm just, I hate people and they realize that I'm a horrible person. And this is the most awful thing, and I don't want to say this, but I have a friend from Wisconsin. And where she comes from, um, there's, not, there's not a lot of black people where she comes from. So she has never said the N word once in her life. So for no reason other than I hate the fact that she's better than me because she's never used a hateful slur, I made it my mission for five months to get her to say this word. It's awful, right? Like, who, who would do that? I have, I have Jewish friends who I've tried to force them to eat pork just because I am an awful human being. And that's why no one likes me. And I think that's why everything I do fails. Because if you're mean to everyone, but then when I'm alone, I like to think about ways to, um, to help the world. Uh, last night, for example, I was watching interracial porn. <laughs> as I often do. And, um, yeah, there is nothing like watching a white guy go down on a black guy, right? Oh. Don't judge. No, no. <laughs> Don't judge me. God. It's, uh, it's the kinks that make the world go around. Um, actually, like, like tra uh, transvestites. Anyone here ever been with a transvestite? Anyone here a transvestite? No, no, no. I love, I love. God, this, this... I like she -mails, and here's why. Um, yes, I understand that they have a dick, but they also got tits, so that really, that's not gay, right? They're not, because they're, they're, they're transgender. They transcend genders, right? They are this new breed of super sexuality. They did this perfect thing. Uh, that sounded so much less gay in my head. <laughs> I, I used to, um, I used to joke with people that if a prostitute approached me on the street, I would just go, well, I'm sorry, I'm not your type. Unless one of them said, well, maybe you are. And then I'd have to, on principle, right? You'd have to go through with it. So I used to joke about that until I had to go through with it on principle. Um, but anyway, I was watching the interracial porn, and right about the time that the black guy nutted in the white guy's mouth, I, I realized that I can solve all of the world's problems with racism and war and, and just hatred by stop referring to people as colors and races and as flavors. 
because there's no war between the 32 flavors at Baskin Robbins. Uh, you don't put vanilla and chocolate ice cream in one bowl, and then the vanilla goes, you know, get that goddamn chocolate out of here, vanilla power. They just come together in harmony to make something better than when they started. So we still refer to black people as, um, as black people and as chocolate Americans. You're gonna have a Everyone loves chocolate. Even a skinhead's gotta love chocolate ice cream, right? Keith, you're a skinhead. Tell me, you love chocolate? No. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, and you know, white people are vanilla, and you got Hispanic people, you can call like a jalapeno flavor, and everything, everything would, everything would be perfect, right? I can make jokes about Hispanic people because my girlfriend's Mexican, so I can say whatever the hell I want about them. That's, again, goes back to how horrible a person I am, because I try to keep one friend of every ethnic group so I can just be as racist as possible. Be like, it's cool, I got a black friend. Actually, I got a black friend here somewhere tonight, so I could have just gone off on a tirade and felt good about myself and everyone would have hated me. But that's the way, um, that's the way I like this stuff. No friends sitting in the dark. But yes, I think that's what you gotta do when you leave here. Uh, just start referring to people as flavors. Everything will be better in this world. Because we all love ice cream, except for the lactose intolerant, but they're not really people to begin with, so fuck them. Alright. I'm done. Um, we're gonna get another guy up here right now. This uh, next guy to get up here, he's a little edgy, just warn you. Um, it might push the envelope a bit, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brandon Longstreet.